Okay, good day. This is AP Calculus. I am Mr. McCulley, and this is the presentation for section 1.1, oh, uh, a preview of calculus. And hopefully it'll be a fairly short one, so let's get right to it. Today we are going to talk about understanding what calculus is and how it compares with pre-calculus. We are going to understand the tangent line problem, and it's basic to calculus or is basic to calculus and we're going to understand that the area problem is also basic to calculus so um, just to jump right into it so some examples the difference between uh, pre-calculus and calculus many of the tasks that we did in pre-calculus will also be revisited in calculus the main change will be that in calculus we will often use a limit process to find the exact values now we probably uh, at least got into limits a little bit in uh, pre-calculus last year. If not, uh, we're definitely going to visit that whole process and discuss what a limit is and define it and you see how it works and then we will apply it to the two main concepts in calculus. But just to give you an idea of some of the differences between what we did in pre-calculus and how we're going to either revisit or modify it in calculus is to give you a, a little bit of difference and or just give you a couple real simple examples. So in calculus or pre-calculus, and we obviously learned the first one before pre-calculus, but we learned how to find the slope of a line. In calculus, we're going to revisit that. We're going to find the slope of a curve at a point. Now, since some, if something is curving, it's hard to, to determine what the slope is because it obviously changes. And so the, the slope of a curve at a point is going to change dependent upon the point that you choose on that curve. We can find the average velocity over an interval and in pre-calculus and then in calculus we can find the instantaneous velocity at a point. So in pre-calculus um, if we said we drove from Coshocton to Columbus and it was 60 miles and it took us two hours, we can go 60 divided by 2 is 30 and that's 30 miles per hour. In calculus, if we have an equation that determines the speed over that entire interval, because it's going to change, because you got to go through Newark and you may have to come to a stop sign, um, there may be uh, hills that slow your car down or speed it up. You may want to pass or get stuck behind traffic and you have to slow down or speed up. So the velocity changes depending upon where you are. So you can think of in calculus, what calculus can do is it can you can at any point along the curve look down at your speedometer and determine how fast you are going at that specific point in time. With pre-calculus, we approximate the area under the curve. And so if I have an ob, you know, a, a shape that is curved and it doesn't have set defined lines, um, we can approximate what that area is, but we can't get an exact value without having some error. Whereas in calculus, we can find the exact area under the curve. In pre-calculus, we can find the work done by a constant force. In calculus, we can find the work done by a varying force. In pre-calculus, we can find the volume of any right solid that has a regular base. And then in calculus, we can find the volume of a solid of revolution. So any curve that we can revolve about an axis, we can find the volume of that. Some of the tasks that we did in pre-calculus with technology, we will actually do algebraically in calculus, for example. In pre-calculus, we found relative extrema. So we could use the max and min function of our calculator. I'm not going to pull out a calculator right now to review that. And you can ask in class if you need to. But with calculus, what we can do is we can actually find the values of these maximum and minimum points. And that, that's a, a very good uh, process that we will use outside. Uh, there are definitely some conclusions that we can make outside of just this is the max, this is the min. The tangent line problem. And so just to kind of give you a general idea of what I mean with a tangent line problem, and this is one of the main uh, questions you're going to be asked in calculus is they are going to ask you to either find the equation of this tangent line or at least the slope of this tangent line. 
And that's very difficult for us to do because we remember that the slope equation is uh, is a difference of the x values and the y values as a quotient. And so since I only have one point, I only have one x value and I only have one y value. So um, that becomes a little bit of a challenge in calculus. We can actually find a process that will allow us to do that. So in pre-calculus, we could approximate that green dotted line. And the way that we did that was we picked a point that was close to our desired point A and draw a line between those two values. Now I may need to make this a little smaller. Now my red line here, that red line is not does not have a slope. In fact, it has a slope that's greater than our green dotted line but it's closer to, and so, or, but it has a slope that's very close to. And the y-intercepts aren't the same, but they're close to being the same. And so what we can do in calculus is what we're going to do is we are going to um, find a way to make this red dotted line be more, or this red solid line be more like the green dotted line. And the way that we're going to do that is if you recall the slope equation, if I put that red dot, again, just right here, here's my um, x1, y1, and this will be my x2, y2. And so the slope of that red dotted line is this slope equation. And again, we're trying to get it to be closer to this tangent line. That's not as good a tangent line. We'll try and make it a little bit better. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let's pull this back down, down a little bit. That's a little closer. What we could do is what we could do is we could say, all right, let's bring this this point right here. Let's see if I can get it down a little bit closer. And what will happen is if I do that. Now, my approximation, this approximation line is a little bit closer to my green dotted line. And if I bring that dot, uh, come on, if you can get it, there we go. If I bring it a little closer yet, I get an even better approximation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the limit process, which is what we're going to get to in the remainder of this chapter, to allow this point to get closer and closer to A so that we can't tell the difference between those two. The second big topic is the area problem. Now in pre-calculus we have this kind of odd shaped curve and we don't can't exactly figure out what it is and so in calculus what we're going to do or in pre let's start with the pre-calculus. With pre-calculus what we could do is we could make a bunch of rectangles here with the same width or maybe varying width and I don't want to do make them too small here because let's just let's just well, just for the sake of speed we will I know they're getting bigger but I want to finish this off let's just assume that each of these distances here is uh, x units long actually let's call them delta x let's let's go back to this here we go Delta X, Delta X, Delta X, Delta X, Delta X, Delta X. And let's just assume that they're all the same. Now, this is a fairly reasonable approximation of this area that is under the curve. We are only technically off by a little bit. Now, we're going to be a little bit short because we have a little bit of area that would not be measured by these rectangles, but it's not too bad, it's fairly good. But in calculus, what we're going to do is we are actually going to be able to figure out the entire area exactly that is under this curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it very similar to this. Uh, and again, the limit of doing this one is letting the, the little dot get closer and closer so that it's uh, almost right on top. What we're going to do is we're going to let these delta x shrink to almost nothing. And the more delta x is, the more rectangles we have. 
of the smaller each of these individuals. And we're going to let this delta x shrink to 0 and have an infinite number of rectangles, which is, I know that's kind of odd, but that's kind of the way you want to think about it. And so finally, what I want you to do is I want you to look in the book on page 47 and 48. There are some examples of pre-calculus versus calculus. And those are the main main things that you want to think about or look at and kind of give you an idea of the difference between calculus and pre-calculus. Well, that's all I got for today, folks. That should be a pretty short one. Only 10 minutes. That's not too bad. So let's finish off with a Star Wars fun fact of the day. And... Uh, my favorite character, Darth Vader, was uh, voiced by, and still is, actually, in all of the, the movies, by James Earl Jones, even though he's starting to get a little bit older. But he was um, he was portrayed in the movies by David Prowse, and David Prowse was a uh, Irish bodybuilder. So he did all of the lines on stage with a thick Irish accent. And then they came in and they recorded James Earl's joy, James Earl Jones's voice and put it into um, the movie. But the, the, the funny part about this is these two guys make up the iconic character of Darth Vader, but they've never met. They've never met face to face. So I found that interesting and thought I'd share. That's all I got, folks. Have a good day. See you in class. Goodbye.